is cooking again with the stone park tigers. Hello once again, Stone Park Tigers. Good to see you. Mr. Stratton here. We're here to make some more food this week. Today we're going to be working with something that's as old as time itself. We're going to be making a recipe, bread, yeah. But we're going to be turning this bread recipe, a simple bread recipe, into something delicious that we all love, mall pretzels. You know, going hanging out at the mall. Sure, I used to hang out at the mall. I get those pretzels and dip them in butter, put my favorite toppings and flavors on them, mall pretzels. So let's look how to make a basic bread recipe and turn it into mall pretzels. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. First of all, the things that are on this side are just some things we're gonna be using later to finish off our recipe. Some toppings, some flavors. We do need a glass, kind of a dish like this or a pan that has a bit of a high side on it. We're gonna, I'll go over those later. We're gonna need some baking soda. You're gonna need a little bit of honey, sweetie. Honey, sweetie. And you're gonna be needing some yeast. Yeah, we're gonna make our bread rise with yeast. When we did our biscuits and cinnamon roll, bread dough was rising with baking powder, right. But now we're making bread, so we're gonna make it rise with yeast. Now, the yeast that we're using is quick rise yeast. It's very fine, very small, works quickly. So when you do buy your yeast, get the quick rise yeast for this recipe. You're also going to, of course, need some flour. We just have some regular flour here and some salt. That's it. To make our bread, we need this and, of course, some water. So let's get things started and we'll put this together. First thing that we're going to do, and again, I have the recipe. It is below in the description. The recipe is there. It'll be posted for you to look at. The first thing that we're going to need is one cup of hot tap water will be fine. So I'm going to go over to the tap here. Now when you're making bread and things like that, you have to make sure that the uh, recipe is exact. It is a science. So this has to be exact. So let's make sure it is exactly one cup of hot water. Now I'm pulling it away. I'm not going to hold it up. I'm going to put it down like that because I want to make sure it's at a cup. Gee, I'm pretty good at that. It's right there. It's right at the cup mark. So I'm going to go over here to my bowl. I'm going to put in one cup of hot water, exactly one cup. Now I'm going to be adding some yeast and honey to that. See, we have to activate the yeast, bring it to life. <laughs> life yeast. Okay, one tablespoon of yeast is going to go in there. And then we're going to add into it something for the yeast to eat. Yeah, they like sugar just like we like sugar. Now, I could put white sugar, brown sugar, but I'm going to put in a tablespoon of honey. Okay, sweetie? Honey. There we go. Honey in there. Now, don't lick your fingers. I know you want to after putting the honey into the bowl, but you just got to wash off there. So, I'm just going to go over and wash for a second. There we go. And come back over. Now, we need to stir that up. I'll grab a fork. I don't need a whisk or anything like that. And we're going to stir that up. Now, of course, you can see what's happening to that. The honey has dissolved inside there. The yeast is beginning to dissolve. It looks just like muddy water. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we have to let the yeast come to life. And that's going to take just a little bit of time. Not very long. We're going to go and we're going to take it over to the stove. Now, I like to do this. You may not have this same setting on the stove, but I'm going to put it on my back burner and I'm going to go to the burner and I'm going to put it on melt. It's a really low temperature. I'm not going up to minimum one, two, three. No, 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 that's too hot. It'll cook these. But I'm putting it on melt and I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. Okay, when we come back after 10 minutes, that should change. It should be bubbly, frothy. It should have come to life. So I'll see you again in 10 minutes. 
four, three, two, one, zero. There you go, timer's going. That was 10 minutes. And look at that, it's nice and frothy, it's warm, it's risen. Our yeast is ready, it's come to life. Mmm, smells like bread, yeah. So let's bring it over here. Now, what else do we need? Now remember, all that's in there is the one cup of hot water, a tablespoon of honey, sweetie, and a tablespoon of yeast. Now, what else do we need? We need some flour, of course. Okay, so I'm gonna take some, this is just plain white flour, but you could use any kind of flour that you want. We need two and a half cups. So I'm gonna dig down deep. So this is called leveling. Making a little bit of mess here because I got a small little area. I'm just giving a little pat like that. Go over the top with my knife. See that straight? And not the part we cut with, but flip it over like that and go over the top. Oh, satisfying. And there it is, one cup. And we need two and a half cups. So I'm gonna go in there deep again. Don't worry about the mess. We're, make, we're in a bakery. That's what we do here. Tap it down just a little bit. Make sure we have it and level it again. Level, there's two. Need a half, gotta be exact. There's my half cup measure. Half cup, and deep. Again, the top, pat it down. Level two and a half. And we need a little bit of salt too. One teaspoon of salt added to that. So let's add a little bit of whoop. There we go, that's okay. All right, we got our salt in there. That's it. Those are the simple things that we need for that. Let's mix that up just a little bit just to get the salt moving around a little bit. All that flour I have on the counter is going to come in handy in a minute anyway. So let's move this around. There we go. Now we can start to add the yeast in. It's a grade nine to do this. This is a grade nine, but you know, all of you guys could be doing this. Any grade level, grade seven, eight, nine, have fun with it. It's a little bit harder to do, but it's fun to do, and it's fun to eat it, of course, at the end. So I have it in the bowl, and I'm just going gently because I don't want it to splash everywhere. We'll start with a rubber scraper. I love a rubber scraper, not a wooden spoon. Do you see how that rubber scraper goes around the edge like that? And so we're trying to get it started by folding it on top of one another like that, just over the top, mixing it together. Now remember, if you have too much flour, it's not going to work right. It's going to be too dry. If you have too much water, it's going to be too liquidy. You've got to be exact with this one. Go just working it first with the rubber scraper and you can see it starting to come together but we can only go so far with our rubber scraper of course we have to get our hands in there so let's use our butter knife again and get everything in so I don't want it to stick to my hands so what do you think I have to put on my hands first do I have to put some flour on my hands I already washed my hands I preheated the oven, by the way. Oh yeah, I did that first, forgot to tell you that. 350 degrees. So it's in there like that, and what I'm doing now is I'm kneading it in the bowl. See, it's a little sticky, it gets on me like that, but as I kind of pull away, pulling the loose flour from the bottom, flipping it over, and I'm pressing with the palm of my hand. You know, I'm not going like this. I'm pressing with the palm of my hand, kneading the dough like that. This takes a little bit of work. You may need mom or dad or brother or sister or nanny or poppy to help you with this because you might get tired. But you can see I've been working out so I'll be okay, I think. So here we go, pressing it down. Don't give up. And once you start to get most of it together, we can take it out and put it on the counter. So here I am, I've been kneading this for quite a while, trying to get it really smooth in here. So working it, making sure I pick it up, but look inside the bowl. You see how there's nothing in the bottom of the bowl left and that's what we're looking to do. So now I'm gonna transfer from the bowl onto the counter. Please don't use too much flour when you're kneading your dough. I don't wanna dry it out. I'm not trying to add to the recipe here. All I'm trying to do is just work the ingredients together, the flour, the salt, the honey, and you can see I'm rolling it, pushing it together, squeezing it out. You see how nice and smooth it's getting. Alrighty, 
just about ready. No big, you know, cracks are in it anymore. Phew, that's okay. All right, so you know what? When we're at school, we don't have a lot of time to put everything together, but I think that looks good right there. We don't have a lot of time, but here at home, you've got extra time, so there's something that we can do. We're going to take that now. We're going to put it back into the bowl, and we're going to let it rise. So we're going to give that at least a half an hour. We're going to put a warm, damp cloth over the top of it and then give that at least a half an hour to rise. I'm going to go put it in a warm spot too, over on top of the oven. So I have my dough there. It's just kind of a warm area over here. I'm going to take a cloth and I'm going to put it on top of that. There it is, got my cloth, so I'm going to just run it under some warm water here. Nice and warm. So we have to let everything react inside of the dough. The yeast is still growing. So we're going to take that and we're just going to put it over the top like that. Okay, we're going to leave that for at least a half an hour, okay? So let's leave it. This is not something we're going to do really quickly. So let's leave this for a half an hour. Let's come back and it'll be ready to use. Hi, it's been about a half an hour. You know, if you want to leave it a little longer, do that. But a half an hour should do it. So let's have a look. I'm not expecting it to be really much larger, but it is a little bit bigger. That looks good. The point is, is that it's nice and soft and worked a little bit and it's nice and warm too. So I just picked the dough off the bottom there. So there it is. It's very soft and warm, easy to work with. We want it to be very uh, like elastic -y, very tangible so that we can use it. Now, we're going to divide this dough. That's beautiful dough all set. We're going to divide it into six equal pieces. That's what we do uh, at the school, and it seems to work for good proportions. So you might say to yourself, well, how am I going to do that? I have some people that think, well, I'll just go across like this and divide it into six. Well, that doesn't work for fractions because that person's only going to get a little teeny piece. This person's going to get a larger. So that doesn't work. How are we going to divide this into six? I find it, it's easiest to do it this way. We'll have it down like that. We'll cut it right down the middle. Look how nice and soft that is. Right down the middle like that. And then we'll start playing with it like a pizza pie. And so we'll cut it up. And it may not be exact. Go like that. Go like that. There's fractions, like that again, and like that again. There we go. And so we have these pieces that are about into six equal pieces like that. And if you find that you have one that feels like it's a little bit bigger than the others, you can steal a little bit off of it and add it to the other just by taking it off and going like that. Now listen, when you make your pretzels, when you roll them, don't have any flour down on your counter. I washed everything off already. So now I have a nice clean counter so that they can stick when we roll it. I'm going to take my dough, feels great, and I'm going to work it in the air first like this. Get it started, like that, stretch it out. It's kind of like making a snake, it's kind of funny doing it like this. Okay, now you have to do two things at the same time. Can you do that? Let's see, this. And that, two things at the same time. Well, I guess that's not too bad. Here we have to roll. So we're rolling back and forth like that, but we're not just rolling, we're pulling apart at the same time. Two things at the same time. So rolling and pulling apart. Be gentle. I don't want to break it if I'm too tough. Roll and pull apart. I look for the parts, you see how it's getting a little skinny? So I'm going to focus on the fat part right in there. Roll and pull apart. These are going to be really long. They're really nice when they're long and thin. So there you go. Look at that. It isn't taking too much. I should have moved everything out of the way so I have lots of room. Long like this. Look at that. What a nice rope shape that I'm getting on that. And I'm barely pressing just a little bit rolling but I'm constantly pulling apart at the same time. Now you can make all kinds of shapes with your pretzels. They don't have to be the classic shape but you could do that. So there you go. I've got my rope. Looks pretty good. I think that it's about the same thickness as maybe a marker or something that you'd use to write with. So there it is there. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it into a pretzel shape. 
I like to go over just like this and go like that. And then I'm going to make a little braid, another little braid like that, and you can see. And then I go whoop up like that with it. And I pinch it right there too, so it kind of holds on to it. Those raw pretzels can go straight onto your pan like that. Well, we do one more. And this time I'm going to just show you some other different things you can do. So that's a classic pretzel shape. Now there is one more thing important we have to do with that. Here we go again. Rolling, but I'm pulling apart. I'm not just rolling. I've seen people, they just go, mm, 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 and it doesn't do anything. So you have to roll and pull apart. Start in the middle again and pull apart like that. Okay, so the other ones that you can do too, which are kind of fun, is just take the rope like that. And by the way, it has to be in a rope shape so that it cooks properly. You don't want to have a big fat thing like that. That's not going to cook properly. It needs to be in a nice rope like that. So what you can do with it, take it like that, and you can make pretzel bites. So just take butter knife and break them off like that into little pretzel bites. Those are all going to get larger as they cook. They'll rise. So you can go like that and you can put those down in the pan and those will be baked into little pretzel bites which are really fun too. And of course you can just simply do this if you want to. Make little pretzel sticks. Sure, do that and lay those out as well. Those will work just fine too. Look, you can take these ropes and you can make heart shapes. And you can do all kinds of things. I've seen students make their initials too. So let's get all of these made and then I'll be right back and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so we've got all our shapes made. Everything's on there. We're not ready for the oven. No, there's one really important step left to making these pretzels that is going to make them golden brown and taste beautiful. And that's dipping them in a solution of hot water, again, very simple, and baking soda. This is going to make sure that they cook golden brown. If we don't, they won't cook golden brown. They'll cook kind of white, like white bread. So let's go over again. It's in the description again, just some hot water. So we're going to put some hot water into here again, as hot as you can get. It doesn't have to be that hot. And we'll put in some hot water, not too much. I believe the recipe is about a cup of hot water. So we'll put some in. So we take our hot water. And I know to some people it might seem kind of odd to dip bread into liquid like that, but it works. Okay, baking soda. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons in there. Maybe two and a half in there like that. Take my whisk and whisk it around, dissolving the baking soda. Not all of it will get dissolved. Quite a bit of it. And you see it gets kind of white. Moving it around. I like to make sure that I have enough. Just a little teeny bit more. Some of it's going to fall to the bottom. That's okay. Now here's the important part. Now when I grab a pretzel to put it in, I like to grab it by the tail so it doesn't fall apart. Go down, dip it into the solution, back and forth, just a couple of times, and back down. There it's ready. Put these in, we'll put them all in at once. Don't have to do them once at a time. Move them around, make sure they're well coated in the baking soda mixture, well coated, and right back on again. Right back on. Gets a little bit messy. Make sure those are well coated. Even take the little bites. You might have all kinds of little bites, right? Those bites. Put them in there. And put just a little more. Make sure we have lots of baking soda. I'm going to move that around again. Baking soda, right? Not baking powder, baking soda. Again, take the pretzel, dip right down. I'm rubbing it right along the bottom of that and down. You can always, if they fall apart, you can fix them up again on the pan after you put them down. So if they go like that, you can move them around, get them into the shape you need it. There we go again. Last one. There we go. And on. Now those are ready for the oven. So make sure that you do that last step that's really important, putting on your baking soda. Let's pop those into the oven. 
We'll come on over here. Again, our oven is 350 degrees. So we're going to put those in the oven. Top shelf, you know, not right at the top. One, two, side by side. In they go. And let's put on our timer, 15 minutes. 15 minutes on a timer, 350 degrees. There we go, and we'll check them in 15 minutes. We're looking for them to be golden brown, just the way we like them. Okay, see you in about 15 minutes. Three, two, one. 15 minutes is up, timer off. Step back, watch the heat coming out. Look at those pretzels. Look at the colors. That's what we're looking for. And again, you wouldn't get that color if you didn't use the baking soda and hot water. So you do need that for that. All right, so let's take one over to our other station here. Take one of the pans. I'm gonna put that down. That's my trivet just to keep, keep things. Now, you can actually get at them right away. They're not that hot. I don't touch the pan at all. I just touch the parchment paper, and the parchment paper is not hot at all. So I'll just take off one of the little sticks that are there. Look at that, the colors on them. Beautiful, I can hear the oven going. I'm just gonna turn off the oven. There you go, all off. So we have a little finger like that on there. We can pull off our pretzel if we want to. Look at the colors there. That's hot, but that's not too bad at all. Beautiful. Okay, let's put some toppings on them. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken some butter, put it in a glass container like that. I just use that and put it in the microwave. You can melt your butter on top of the stove too. You know, like popcorn butter. And so now it's all liquidy and I can use a brush like that. If you don't have a brush like that, just use a spoon and spoon it over or just pour a little butter on top of them. But you need to put some butter on each one of them first. What have we got over here? A combination of sugar and cinnamon. Put them together into a bowl and mix up your sugar and cinnamon. So we have that if you like it sweet. We have garlic. I like garlic on mine. So we have some garlic salt there. Yeah, these are popcorn toppers, right? So we have some dill and we have some white cheddar. You can use those. And of course, Parmesan cheese if you like. So you just take your butter and you put some butter over them first. You have to do that or the toppings don't stick to it. There you go, what a nice treat this is. Now I'll take that and I'll put a little bit of sugar on. Lori, you'd like a little sugar? Yeah, okay. So I'll put some cinnamon on there. She likes that. And for Veronica, I'm gonna put on some garlic. Woo, careful, not too much. Little garlic on it, and she likes dill. Well, who doesn't like dill? We all like a dill. Put that on there like that. And even if you want to on the garlic side, I think I'll put on some Parmesan cheese on there too. Look at that. Look at all of the food that we made. Very cheap and easy to do. Will we take a bite? Look at that. We picked that off. You want to eat them when they're hot. Take a little bite of that. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, that's good stuff. Now I'm telling you, if you don't eat them all, wrap them up and put them away. But when you go to eat them again, pop them back into the oven just for a little while, just to get them nice and warm and crisped up again, and you can use them again. Well, that's it. We made some mall pretzels today. I hope you enjoy making them. I miss you as always, and we'll see you soon in the Foods Lab at Stone Park, okay? Bye, everybody.